which said that the length of a segment can be put into correspondence with real numbers on a number line. Basically, it said that line segments can be measured. Well, this basically says that angles can be measured. And that that measurement is going to be between 0 and 180 degrees. And we can use the protractor to do that. So any angle can be measured to be between 0 and 180 degrees. Um, just the same as any line segment can be measured using a ruler or tape measure or something like that. Then we had the segment addition postulate that said if you have two pieces of segments, then you can add them together. Well, the angle addition postulate is very similar. Okay, so the angle addition postulate says D is in the interior of angle ABC. So if I have some angle ABC, D is in the interior only if I can take this angle plus this angle and they add up to make the big angle. So if I call this angle 1 and this is angle 2, the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 would equal the measure of angle ABC. If D was outside somewhere, it wouldn't work that way. But essentially what this just tells me is I can add up two angles or three angles or four angles that are connected to equal the largest of the angles in the bunch. So that IFF is the abbreviation for if and only if. And then you never have to write that down ever again. Oh, I put the second F on there. I didn't mean to. So IFF is if and only if. Angle addition postulate. Um, angle, we're trying to find angle 1. Angle 2 is 56. And the entire angle, JKL, this whole thing, is 145. And we can do that two ways. You can do just straight arithmetic or you can do algebra. So if we're going to use algebra, we'll call this x. And so I can say x plus 56 is equal to 145 because angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to the whole thing. And we can subtract 56 from both sides. And then we'll do some math. We'll get 89. Okay. If you don't want to do algebra, because for whatever reason you're not fond of it, this minus that equals that. Right? If this plus this is this, then this minus this is this. So I can just do the straight subtraction, and I'll get the same answer. So two ways to go about it, just if, if this makes more sense to you, do it this way. If this makes more sense to you, do it this way. Um, here we are given angle 1. Oops, I said angle 1 when I meant to write 23. Angle 1 is 23. And then the whole thing here is 131. And I want to find this one. Okay, but I need a little bit more information. <coughs> Bless you. What do I know about this angle right here? Yeah, this box tells me it's 90. So anytime you see that, it's automatically 90. So again, algebra, I could call that x, and I could do 23 plus 90 plus x is equal to 131. And then 90 and 23 is 113. And then I could subtract 113. And I'm going to get, um, yeah, you know, I don't feel like doing that one. 18. Or if you don't want to do the algebra, subtract the 90. Subtract to 23. You'll get the same answer. Okay, any two angles that form a linear pair are supplementary. We actually kind of had this information already. We just now have it officially as a theorem. And what that tells me is that um, their measures. 
So basically, anytime you hear the word linear pair or supplementary, you can automatically go 180 degrees. Just 180 degrees. Or if you see a straight line with two angles on it, you say 180 degrees. Our complement theorem is very similar. Okay, this one says if the non-common sides of two adjacent angles... Okay, when you say non-common sides, you're talking about these two sides. Okay, the common side is the side they share, and the non-common sides are the outside. So, like, if this was a duplex, this is the wall that the two duplexes share, and these are your outside ones. The non-common ones are the ones on the outside. Okay, so if the non-common sides of two adjacent angles form a right angle, so 90 degrees, then the two angles are complementary. So angle 1 and angle 2 equal 90 degrees. Kind of confusing, so, but we can do this. All right, so using a transit, the surveyor sites the top of the hill and records an angle measure of 73 degrees. So you know the, survey, the transit is the thing on the tripod that the surveyors with you know the orange and white and they look through it and they're measuring mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So you've got some guy and he's a surveyor and he has the transit. And yeah, it looks like a camera, but it's, it's not. But they're looking through it. And he is looking at a hill. Okay. Now the transit is going to measure the angle to the top of the hill. Pretend that's a straight line and it actually hits the top of the hill. Um, but that's not... It's not... The angle that he's measuring is not from the ground up. That's not what a transit measures. They measure from a line going straight down, so if you're using a transit, the line of measurement for the angle is straight down like that. Okay, so the angle that gets measured is right here, not from the bottom. Okay. So this line is 73 degrees, and then we want to find out what is the angle the hill makes with the horizon. Well, the horizon, we're going to go parallel to the horizon, obviously, because we have to move down. So, par But parallel has similar angles. So if I make this line here versus here, if I were to move the camera to the ground, it would be the same angle. We want to find this angle here. So whenever you're surveying, if they're trying to find an angle of ascent, like to find out how, how what's the steepness of a hill or a mountain or whatever, the measurement that they get is actually the angle coming down from the top. So then they have to subtract to find the angle going up. Because these two together make a right angle. The horizon and the transit make a 90 degree. Does that make sense so far? So in order to find that angle for the hill to the horizon, we have to do 90 minus 73. 27. No, 17. I was right. Okay. So this angle here would be 17 degrees. What do I know about a linear pair? Just gave you the theorem. Linear pair, then they're supplementary. So that tells me that this linear pair is going to equal 180 degrees. And that angle 6 is 3x plus 32. And angle 7 is 5x plus 12. And I want to find x, angle 6, and angle 7. So if I add them together, it'll equal 180. 3x plus 5x is 8x. 32 and 12 is 44. So 8x is 136. Divide both sides by 8. I 
you get 17. So that's how many x. But I still want to find angle 6 and angle 7. So measure of angle 6 is 3 times 17 plus 32. So 51 plus 32 is 83. And the measure of angle 7 is 5x plus 12. So 5 times 17 plus 30, or sorry, 12. So 85 plus 12, which is 97. And if you want to do a quick check, you know, check yourself. 83 plus 97 should equal 180. So if you solved x correctly, then these will equal 180. And they do. So you're good. Some, some properties. And these are the same properties as we had for equalities and for segments. They also hold true for angles. So angle 1 is itself. So reflexive. Um, symmetric, so if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, then you can flip it around and say that angle 2 is congruent to angle 1. So you can flip around the congruent sign just like you can an equal sign. And then we also have transitive. If angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, then angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. And remember with the transitive, we take this center chunk out two and two and put the ends together. Okay, so the congruent supplements theorem covers two situations. Um, first we would have something like this, where if angle one and angle two is equal to 180, and angle 2 and angle 3 is equal to 180. That makes angle 1 congruent to angle 3. Right? Because 1 plus 2 is 180. 2 plus 3 is 180. That means 1 and 2 have to be the same. Or 1 and 3 have to be the same thing. So like, say this was 100. These would have to both be 80 for that to work. Does that make sense? Okay, the other one is if so I've got these random angles and let's say angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 1 and 2 equal 180 and angle 3 and 4 equal 180. That makes I need to put measures in there. That makes angle 1 congruent to angle 3. So this is the if. These are the thens. Okay, so 2 and 4 are the same. 1 plus 2 is 180. Well, that's the same as 1 and 4 being equal to 180 because 2 and 4 are the same. And then uh, 3 plus 4 equals 180 is the same thing as 3 and 2 equaling 180. So if 2 and 4 are both 60, let's say, and they're congruent, then 1 and 3 have to both be 120 in order for any of this to work. So they have to be congruent. Does that make sense at all? So you either have two angles that are supplementary to the same angle, and that forces them to be congruent, or two angles that are supplementary to two angles that are already congruent to each other, and that forces those initial two angles to be congruent as well. So again, this is two situations. If I have 
angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary, so they add up to 90. And let's say angle 2 and angle 3 are complementary, they also add up to 90. That makes angle 1 and angle 3 congruent. Because if 2 was 50, these would both have to be 40. And likewise, if I had... I'm just going to write out random angles here. Okay, so let's say 2 and 4 are the same. So Okay, so 2 and 4 are for sure the same. And angle 1 and angle 2 add up to 90. And angle 3 and angle 4 add up to 90. Let's put the angle in there. Well, if 2 and 4 are both, say, 50 degrees, this would make 140, and that would make 340, so that forces angle 1 and angle 3 to be the same. So I have my statements, and I have my reasons, and I'm given that angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical. Well, I want to prove that they're congruent, but let's say we don't have that theorem yet. So I have to introduce angle 1, and I have to do, introduce angle 3, because they're not there yet. So I said they're reflexive property. So now they exist. And... Angle 1 and angle 2 form a linear pair. Okay. And um, that's the definition of linear pair. And then we also have angle 1, sorry, angle 2 and angle 3 form a linear pair. And we also have angle 1 and angle 4. And I also have, you know what, theorem. Vertical angles are congruent. And it makes sense if you think about it, because here I have my Nice, beautiful straight lines. Okay, we have nice, beautiful straight lines, right? One, two, three, four. Angle one plus angle two is 180. Angle two plus angle three is 180. So that makes one and three the same. Well, angle one and angle two are 180, but angle one and angle four are 180. So that makes two and four the same. So it has to be that vertical angles are congruent. Okay. And uh, if you don't like to write out words, you can say vert angles congruent. For theorems, um, perpendicular lines intersect to form right angles. So if I have two perpendicular lines, I get four right angles. All of those would be right angles. So I could put, you know, right angle boxes in each one. Um, then we have that all right angles are congruent. Makes sense, right? They're all 90 degrees, so they would have to be congruent, yeah. Because they would all be 90 degrees, so 90 is congruent to 90. Um, 
perpendicular lines form congruent adjacent angles. Okay, and if you think about that again, we've got we've got perpendicular lines. So if I'm making these two angles, I've got a 90 and a 90. They're adjacent because they're sharing this wall, and they're both congruent. So I have congruent adjacent angles. And then I have, if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then they are right angles. And that makes sense also. If I have these two angles that are next to each other, and if they're both congruent and they add up to 180, there's only one number that you can have two of that's the same, you know what I mean? Like it has to be 90. Because 180 divided by 2 is 90. So if they're congruent and supplementary, they have to be right angles. And then finally, if two congruent angles form a linear pair, And again, that makes sense because let's say I have this linear pair and if these are congruent and there's two of them and they form 180, it has to be 90 and 90. 